All right, all right, here we go. Bring up your host and MC of the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, give a big hand for Miss Magnolia Lynn right there. Very, very funny young lady. Have fun, sweetheart. Hello. How is everyone? Cool, cool. Thank you so much for coming out. I think you made the right decision. It's the decision that I made. Uh, it's the decision that all of these comics made and also uh, the employees of the building. A lot of people decided to come here tonight. But it was not the most important decision because indeed there was another decision made today by the Supreme Court that all marriage is equal in the US or at least the gay kind is equal in the US now. But that's okay, you don't have to clap for civil rights or anything. <laughs> Whatever, right? It's just a struggle of the past several hundred years. Um, but yeah, I haven't really written a joke about it yet because um, not everything is a joke. Certainly not the eternal damnation of a whole country. <laughs> um, all right, so my name is Magnolia. Uh, I work in a bakery. And of course, uh, working in a bakery, we get the routine questions, do you serve vegan, do you serve gluten-free? That's totally cool. One that's a little bit stranger though is sometimes people call and they ask, are your cupcakes kosher? And I don't know how to respond mostly because I haven't read the book that says what Jewish people can and can't have in their cupcakes. But turns out apparently our cupcakes are not kosher. So whenever someone calls and they ask me, hey, do you guys serve kosher cupcakes? Um, I go with company policy, which is to say, no lady, we don't serve Jews. Uh, and then click. <laughs> but I got a really negative Yelp review recently, so I don't know what that was about. We don't. Um, while we're on the topic of race as a nation, uh, and in the context of my set, I would like to say something very personal from my own heart, which is that I really am tired of being called white. I don't think it speaks to my racial history at all. What I would like to be called is a person of privilege <laughs> from now on. <laughs> we can get that started. <laughs> so, I dropped a baby the other day and it's so scary. Anybody else? Have you ever dropped a baby? Anybody? I don't believe. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I don't believe that. I think some of you have dropped babies, but that's okay. I'll overlook it. I dropped a baby. And it's so scary when you drop a baby. It's like the most terrifying thing ever. But, like, honestly, guys, it wasn't that bad. Like, nothing really happened to the, it kind of just like bounced right back up, it was fine. <laughs> like, why is there this big fear of dropping babies? Like, okay, to put it in perspective, I've dropped babies and I've dropped iPhones. And there was not a $70 deductible for the baby <laughs> any of the times that it happened. So, I guess it's okay to do that now. Um, so I work in a bakery, like I said earlier. Bye. It was cool hanging out with you. Have a good night. Okay. Okay, um, so I work in a bakery and um, I decided uh, Wow, I'm so sorry for how that started. Let me start over. Who smokes pot? <laughs> cool, cool. Um, me too, I love to smoke pot. I smoke weed more often than uh, a teenage boy masturbates on a Sunday. I smoke so much pot, uh, but I have a limit, and my limit is work. I never get high before work. And that's because I tried it once, and I managed to traumatize myself into eight hours of sobriety every day. Here's how it happened. 
I used to work front of house, which is customer service. And then a few months back, I got moved to back of house, which is I make the food that people order. And to work back of house, you have to start at 6 in the morning. You have to clock in and be ready to go by 6 a.m., which means that I have to drive to work at 5.30 a.m., which means I had to wake up that morning at fuck o'clock. <laughs> so I decided to get high. So it's 5.30, I'm on my way to work, and I've got this hash pen, and I'm taking the fattest fucking rips from this pen. I'm hitting this pen harder than a police officer likes to hit historically disadvantaged minorities. So I'm pretty, yeah, I know, we should do something about it, guys. We should, but we don't. So I'm pretty high when I get to work that morning, and I'm having a really, I love to be high, I'm having a really good time until I open the door of that bakery, and suddenly I'm in a place where I'm surrounded by responsibilities. It was like going to a really, really cool party and then waking up the next morning and realizing I was probably pregnant. <laughs> but guys, I hold it together pretty well until about 6.30 in the morning when my manager tells me to go out into the big industrial walk-in and grab a tray of raw frittatas that we're gonna bake. So jump forward, I'm in the walk-in, I've got the frittatas, I back up to turn away, and then from behind me, I hear a gentle thud. And so I turn around and I look, and I'm so high that I see what I've done, but I don't really realize what I've done. I turn around, look down, how'd that cake get fucked up? I figured out how the cake got fucked up. And I panicked, because this cake is not just any cake. This is a three-tiered custom wedding cake. Cost $350, it's in my walk-in because it's scheduled for pickup today. And I just knocked it over. So, there's a couple of thoughts that go through my head right now. First of all, I have to tell somebody so that this horrible mistake can be fixed. But on the other hand, I really like my job, so I don't know what to do. So I made a decision. I walked inside, I wiped the frosting off of the tray, that was important, and then I turned to the kitchen manager and I said, hey, there's a cake in the walk-in and it's fucked up and I don't know what happened to it. And that's why I don't get high at work anymore. So, um, that was my set. I'm never sure how it's gonna go in taverns because I'm not a pirate, and so I don't know how to relate my comedy to that crowd sometimes. But anyway, we have some wonderful comics coming up tonight. Um, next is Garrett Waller. So, yay, Garrett! <laughs> All right, that was fun. Let's do that. How's it going? We doing okay? Sweet, let's just get into it, okay? I was abandoned at a young age by my mom. Turns out choosy moms choose dick. <laughs> Told that joke to my dad, he goes, that's great, but you're gonna wanna make it plural. I made amends with my mom but we still get in fights from time to time and she utters that phrase that all moms say, I brought you into this world, I can take you out. I said, that's fine, I'm going out the way I came in. <laughs> when I was younger, my mom and my stepdad locked me in a closet so they could bone. I didn't figure it was gonna have any weird effects on me. <laughs> Turns out I can only masturbate while crying. <laughs> A couple of high school kids figured this out. My nickname all throughout high school, Tearjerker. <laughs> Which they call you Tearjerker, and then you start to cry. And then it's a vicious cycle.
I'm pretty sure my mom's Sasquatch. Like, she fits the bill. She's super tall and hairy, seldom ever seen. There's always some redneck claiming that he plowed her in his truck last night. <sighs> I feel loose. I feel good. How do you guys feel? Good. Yeah. Standing here for like two minutes. I haven't sweat yet. Doing all right. Uh, all right. So I'm from Pueblo. Yeah. I get a, yeah. I get a bad rap being from Pueblo. They're like, every time I go outside of public, like, you gangster? You hard? No. <laughs> Closest I ever come to being hard is this time I bought a shirt that said, my love belongs to the street. And I argued for 15 minutes with the clerk that I was not gangster, but in fact, my wife's a whore. The clerk goes, oh, you think you're funny, huh? You think you're 10 feet tall and bulletproof? I said, nah, dog. I'm like five feet wide and probably take a couple stabs, though. <laughs> How many of you guys here have this, like, thin, thin patch of hair on your abdomen that goes down to a place you like to call Pleasureville? I think you guys call it a happy trail? Yeah. I got a happy four-lane highway. It goes to a place I like to call the junkyard. Last time there was an accident on that highway, it looked like a milk truck tipped over in a wheat field. That was a sperm joke. I said that once. I got through with my set like three minutes into it after that joke, and this guy goes, Oh, that was a sperm joke. This lady on the other side of the room goes, you're just now getting that and you're the fastest sperm? <laughs> and that got me thinking like, holy shit, I was the fastest sperm. What did that have to look like? Like chewed up bubble gum, I assume. Had to pass me like a kidney stone. <sighs> Growing up in Pueblo, uh, you, you realize a lot of things. We have a lot of similarities between the Hispanic and the, the Irish. Like, for starters, we'd do anything for Jesus or Jesus. And secondly, we love potatoes or papas. And lastly, if we beat our kids, it's totally cool to blame it on the alcohol or cervezas. But for as many similarities as we have, we have differences. Like, um, sloppy joes. In the white culture, we have sloppy joes, this mangled mess of deliciousness. In the Hispanic culture, you have sloppy Jose's. And you can always tell when a woman's had a sloppy Jose because she's pregnant. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, we, our storytelling's a little different, too, because in the Hispanic culture, you have uh, La Llorona. You guys know about La Llorona? This, uh, basically, this woman drowns her two kids in the river. And she spends every night for the eternity wailing, trying to get them back. In the white culture, we have Yolanda. She, uh, she lost both her kids to DSS. <laughs> she spends every night roaming the aisles of uh, Save-A-Lot. Do you guys have a Save-A-Lot up here? Yeah, yeah of course, sweet. <laughs> She spends every night roaming the aisles of save a lot trying to find her EBT card. That's food stamps for the privileged. <sighs> I've gone like seven minutes without saying boner. Doing all right. Okay. I feel like I've been uh, intimate with you. I felt like we shared a couple things so I could go a little deeper. Be real honest with you. I'm afraid of black dudes. <laughs> Bear with me. All right? Mainly because they have this love for big white bitches. And from behind, I kind of look like a big white bitch. <laughs> My 
My name's Garrett Waller. You guys have been awesome. That was Garrett Waller, everybody. That was so funny. I really wanted red hair when I was younger, uh, but now I grew up and I look like Daenerys Targaryen's brother instead. So it's okay. Does anyone watch Game of Thrones? Okay, good. It just wasn't funny, that's all. So next is Olivia Lindstrom. Please give it up for Olivia. Woo! Hello, everybody. Let's give it up again for Eugene Kenny and our host. Yeah, thank you all for being here and for staying here. If you're staying, you're a brave soul and a nice person. Um, so, like many of the, uh, the uh, white girls in Denver this summer, I'm on a summer cleanse. And uh, I don't know if you guys have ever been on a cleanse, but it's a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication. You really just have to decide and commit. Um, I'm about two weeks in, and I'm already noticing changes in my body. Um, so the diet is you just drink beer. And uh, <laughs> if I ever need an excuse to get out of anything now, I have like third trimester I'm working on. Like, I can't help you move, I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> so, yeah, if you're on a cleanse, stick with it. It's worth it. It's worth it. Um, so my shrink told me that I was winning the battle against depression and anxiety. Um, so I decided I probably need a melodramatic movie theater commercial. Where there's like a flashing sequence of like ringing the doorbell to a party and all of these, you know, holding hands. And it's just like, we are the few, the uncomfortable, the socially awkward. <laughs> like, there should be awareness, people. Like, good for the gay people, I'm glad this happened. I'm all for the gay people, but what about just the uncomfortable people? <laughs> all right, so I am, uh, like I said, kind of socially awkward, so it works out, I am dog slash house sitting right now, and I will sit the shit, which is hard to say, out of your house. Like, you want me to watch a house? I will sit around your house the entire time you are gone. <laughs> like, I have, nothing, I have nothing better to do. I will be there. <laughs> and so I was out on the porch the other day, uh, and the dog was watching the squirrels, and um, I noticed the squirrel started watching the dog, and then I think the squirrel noticed me watching the dog, watching the squirrel, and I was like, I really need a hobby. <laughs> like, pretty bad, I need a hobby. <laughs> but I didn't come up with some, and so instead I just went ahead and called my friend, and he was like, well, I have some drugs, and I could come over. And that's a hobby, right? <laughs> <laughs> and so we were out on the front porch, and I was, you know, looking at the grass, looking at the trees, looking at everything, I was like, Nothing seems that weird. I don't know if the drugs are working. And he was like, well, do you usually hug the dog and ask how it's feeling about not being able to catch the squirrel? <laughs> like you're giving the dog therapy right now. Is that a usual thing? I was like, all right, the acid may have kicked in. <laughs> all right, so watching TV is not another good pastime if you can't do people. And uh, so I've been watching Wilfred a lot lately, which, woo, thank you for knowing at least. And it's really weird. It's kind of a messed up show. Um, I don't know that I would recommend it to people, but I watched all of it and then I started having dreams that my chinchilla was talking to me. <laughs> um, but it's all in Spanish. Um, <laughs> so I can't understand anything, which is really unfortunate. And that's a joke where some people come from. <laughs> All right. If I had a web blog, I would talk about things like that there instead of here. Um, and if I had a web blog, I think I would name it Clothed and Concerned. 
um, which is sort of a play of, I don't know if you've seen Naked and Afraid. Um, but it's, it's basically Survivor. It's another horrible like Survivor TV show. Uh, but Naked and Afraid, I didn't even believe that it was, it was a real show and somebody told me the title. And so my web blog would be clothed and concerned. Um, and I'd be fully clothed but in the shower. And the shower would be on. So I'd just be dripping wet. Which is the point in the show where I say dripping wet to try and bring the male attention back. And I'm, hey, he's here. I'm sorry, Dad. Sorry that that happened. Um, but it has been proven effective. Uh, my dad's one of the main reasons I got into comedy. Because um, he's a very funny guy. Uh, but when I was growing up, he told a lot of really off-color jokes that would not be, not be funny anymore. But one of them ended with the punchline, you don't sweat much for a fat girl. So like, first of all, this is who I grew up with, <laughs> like influencing my ego. <laughs> so you don't sweat much for a fat girl. Um, but I do, I, I sweat a lot. I'm a sweaty human being. So now I'm not sure how to interpret my life. And that's been awful. I watched another show, uh, a documentary about a Tourette's road trip. Um, because people with Tourette's don't always have a ton of social outings, similar. Um, because they say just inappropriate things all the time, right? And so a bunch of them got together and they were friends and they were like, let's go on a road trip. And it's a great idea, except then out the windows, anywhere they are, they're like screaming things. Because <laughs> they can't help it, right? Like they all get each other, but then they're in a parking lot somewhere and it's like, yeah, fat cow! <laughs> just out the window of this van and like, cunt! And just all these terrible things. Um, but good for them. I'm not sure what that was supposed to be. Um, but words. I work with kids. I'm on summer break right now. And uh, woo woo, summer break. Feels weird. I don't feel, feel right doing it. But when I work with kids, uh, a lot of the other teachers come to me with concerns. Because, you know, when you're working with little people, you want to make them as best you can. And so this lady came to me and she's like, you know, I have a trouble not swearing sometimes in front of the kids. Like sometimes I'll drop something. Like the other day I dropped a stack of folders and I was like, shit, in front of all these fourth graders. And I was like, oh yeah, you know. It's like I always have gone with honesty as the best policy with kids, you know? Like they're pretty honest and we should be pretty honest. And so it's like just the other day a little kid came up to me and I was like, remember, I hit you because I'm drunk. I never hit you when I'm not drunk. <laughs> so it's not about you. It's just, just about the scale of drunkenness, really. All right. Uh, sometimes I work too hard. Sometimes I eat too healthy. And sometimes I run people over with my car. That was the end. <laughs> <laughs> I have a chinchilla too. What's yours? What's his name? Chinchilla. That's a really good name for those. Uh, next is Kira Kaylin. Woo! Thank you. Hello. I'm glad we're taking Whoop Whoop back from the insane clown posse. I've heard that more in the past like three days. Then, uh, no, but, okay. Really? Okay. Um, so, I have a lot of friends who are like healthy diet individuals. They do a lot of the, the trends. The newest one's paleo, I guess, um, which I've never understood because everyone who tried the paleo diet clearly went extinct. It was not a good option, but I realized like I need to eat a lot better. I gotta buckle down on that. I, uh, cause you know, you are what you eat, and uh, I just really gotta start eating rich people. <laughs> I am so goddamn broke, it's a problem. Like, I know the best things in life are free, but so are cold sores, wasps, and low self-esteem. Like, it's kind of a problem. Uh, I actually, if you live in this neighborhood, there's a Quiznos up on Pecos, where I am a regular. Which is a good thing to admit about yourself in front of other people. It's almost like an AA meeting. 
Uh, but I realized, like, if you go and you eat at Quiznos, like, you might as well just be eating, like, a picture of a sandwich. <laughs> like, especially if that picture was drawn on the back of a Quiznos employee's suicide note. Because they are not a happy group of people. Like, there's really only two people that work there. One is a teenage girl with this exact piercing to makeup ratio that lets you know she's not gonna get her life together. Not before that second baby daddy moves out. And uh, the other is like a dude in his like mid 40s who looks like everybody he's talked to today has handed him a subpoena. <laughs> Speaks volumes about yourself where that's where you go to like meet people. Um, like, no one in there looks good either. Like, they all kind of look like you pulled their body out of a swamp, slapped a couple of tattoos on for color. And then if you read reviews for that Quiznos, they're not good. It, and they have one that has that, like, I wish I could give it no stars. I was like, they work at Quiznos. They have never seen the stars. But, like, they all talk about how how disinterested and unfriendly the staff is. And I always find that weird. He's like, you want the staff at Quiznos to be interested? You thought that was plan A for them? Like, nobody plans on doing that, okay? Something went wrong in their life. Like, if anything, that's plan I drink myself to sleep at night because that liberal arts degree wasn't really the ticket to tomorrow I was hoping for. <laughs> Thank you, liberal arts majors. Um, yeah, and I know exactly how they feel, because I used to work at a sandwich shop, or delicatessen, if you're into letters. And it was <laughs> the most soul-crushing job I've had in my life. Like, people would just come in and say things that just made you lose faith in humanity. Like, this one time we were slow, this guy came in, and he actually said to me, oh, are you working hard or hardly working? It's like, I don't know, are you really depressing or depressingly real? <laughs> Does anything really exist out there? Um, you know, the funny thing is now I work at a bakery. I actually work at a vegan bakery. And uh, this guy came in the other day. You know, you have to like take orders for like the specialty things. And this guy came in, real nervous guy, really nerdy glasses. That's how you tell. And he comes, he's like, yes, I would like a, uh, I'd like a gluten-free carrot cake. He's like, okay. And he's just like, do you want anything written on it? And he's like, yes, I would, uh, I'd really appreciate it if you could write, die, bitch, die. You cheated on me. I'm taking the TV. I was like, I can't put that on there. He's like, oh, it's not gonna fit. I was like, no, sir, I can't do that because this is a nice place. But also, why are you sending her a die bitch die cake and respecting her dietary restrictions at the same time? Uh, you're about to find out how little I know about the Quran, guys. You look like a real uh, religious studies savvy crowd, so. Correct me on anything I have wrong. But so basically, you do the thing, you blow up the thing, you die, you go to heaven, there's 72 virgins. And I've always found that really weird. Because first of all, uh, you have eternity. So like, eventually you're not gonna have 72 virgins, you'll just have 72 hostile women and a bunch of babies. Also, like, totally a bucket listy kind of goal, because that's six virgins a year for 12 years, so start young, you'd knock that out in your early 30s. Um, and not a super great deal for female terrorists, because what am I going to do with 72 virgins? So, God, I'm glad my computer works so well. Get to wait here while you awkwardly feel me up like a bag of grapefruits that's not ripe. Uh, and also, like... Why virgins? Like, have you had sex with a virgin? Are you, like, are you afraid of diseases? Because if there are diseases in your afterlife, you should probably switch religions. Uh, and like, having sex with a virgin, not, not plan A, I would hope. Because it's like, I mean, do you enjoy like motionless fucking and lots of crying? Like, <laughs> really? You'd want like a massive whore, like someone who knows what she's gonna do, you know? It's heaven, it's probably still fine. Um, Cause no virgin is gonna slap you on the bed like a starfish on the hull of a cruise liner and suck on your balls like it's the last bag of gobstoppers. It is not in their repertoire. That's right. 
Uh, wrong religion, but that's right. Um, I actually don't like to make fun of religion. That one in particular, because I'm afraid I'm gonna die. So if you don't see me in a few days, this is why. But um, you know, if you, if you become religious or you were raised religious and it gives you something the, you know, like a sense of hope and a sense of purpose in life, that's great, you know? I'm, I'm fine with that and I really respect that as long as you don't start blowing people up. Um, and I have a lot of uh, friends, I was a science major, so a lot of my atheist friends were in science, and they'd always come up with uh, this classic gem of like, well, I just don't understand how like an otherwise rational human being could believe in like talking snakes and the resurrection and stuff. I was like, really? You got no idea? Because let me tell you something, I'm an otherwise rational person, and if I use an automatic toilet and it goes off before I'm done, there's about seven seconds, I am absolutely certain there's an alien eel monster that's gonna rocket up my poop shoot and eat my brain. Despite knowing and understanding that men grow beards as a natural phenomenon like any mammal, it's only this year that I come to terms with the fact that you don't stand in front of the mirror and just go, Arr! while it comes out of your face like the Play-Doh spaghetti. Because I thought that's why like, guys would get jealous of each other's beards, because it was like you were face flexing, and you'd see that guy with like, the triple mustache, and you'd be like, his face is swole. It was just envy. Uh, when I went to school, I went to school downtown, and um, whenever something would happen, they would send us what they call a timely alert with details about the crime and where, because uh, you could avoid it since criminals are so punctual. And uh, these were all real crimes, and they should be taken seriously. It could just be hard to, because the one I got the most off at was for what Campus PD called forceful fondling. And I won't say that that's not a horrible violation of someone's rights in their personal space. It's just that the forceful fondler doesn't really sound that intimidating to me. <laughs> Like, he could easily come in a Happy Meal as, like, a Scooby-Doo villain, you know? There's the forceful fondler, Ronald McDonald and Keith the Priest. They all fit nicely in there. And, uh, but what were you supposed to do if you met the forceful fondler? You'd blow a rape whistle. Just the worst advice I've ever heard. Like, you want to empower a woman, teach her Muay Thai, or have her carry bear spray in her snatch, but don't give her a whistle. Because, like, if blowing a whistle were effective, we would have other musical instruments you could use in other heinous crimes. Like, look out! He's got a gun! I'd better sound the murder trumpet! Burp, 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 burp! Uh, I never met the forceful fondler. It's just a thing. Uh, the only weird thing that happened to me on campus was one time I was just walking to class and this guy walks past me and he goes, You made my cock get the flu. Now you need to make it some soup. And I was like, good for you. Like, way to approach a stranger with wild accusations and logistical nightmares, because you have just asserted that I diseased your penis with a respiratory infection, and the only way it's gonna recover is if I thrust it into boiling hot broth, as is the male fantasy. Uh, also, I found it kind of weird that he called it his cock. That's always been a gross word to me. I always feel like Dick is somebody's uncle somewhere. Good old Uncle Dick. That's why we all have a weird uncle. But, um, like, I think it kind of reflects the attitude that we have about genitalia. You usually call it something that is not something you'd want near you. It's a, it's a one-eyed snake or a pecker or something else kind of gross. And I think that's because, like, no matter how attractive a dude is, sorry to say this, like, you could be Ryan Gosling or uh, I, don't, I don't know enough celebrities to finish that. You know, whoever it is that's, like, the sexiest man alive, and you're still kind of working more or less with the same letdown of a sex organ. Because, like, penises, like, they're just awful. They're like deep sea fish. Like, something that was just shrouded in darkness all the time, so it never needed to be attractive. <laughs> Like, you are hoping for average. That's like your best case scenario for your wiener is that it's about as gross as most of the other ones. And I'm not gonna say mine's any better, by the way, because uh, if 
I had decided to run up to complete strangers the way that that dude ran up to me, I'd be going up to people and going, smell my meat flower! <laughs> I'm Kira McKayla, and that's all I got for you. I cannot believe you wouldn't write die bitch die on a cake. That is terrible customer service. But that's okay. Who so is Kira? Next is Pam Sturter. Pam, woo! Wow. I'm like, how am I gonna follow up Kira? That's okay, I got, I'm showing more cleavage than she was, so I, I'm off to a good start. Let's give it up so far for all the communities you've seen so far. Aren't they awesome? Wow. It is really great to be back here at Aries again. Last time I was at Aries, uh, Melissa, the bartender, she put a date rape drug in my drink. Woo! Tequila. <laughs> It was so good, I asked for four more. <laughs> Turns out it really does make your clothes fall off. So, yeah, that was pretty cool. So, I'm also from Pueblo, Colorado. Yeah, I know. Actually, I moved to Pueblo because it was closer to the state hospital. And it just makes those family reunions a lot easier to attend. <laughs> My family isn't the little bit off the rocker kind of crazy. My family is really actually batshit crazy. In fact, they're even marrying crazy people. Like my son-in-law, Tyrone. Yes, he's black. Well, actually, he's half black and half Korean. And luckily, it's the bottom half that's black and the top half that's Korean. So he's a well-endowed genius, so that's good, yeah. We needed one of those in the family. But I guess my daughter wanted to marry somebody like her dad. So Tyrone also has OCD. And I was talking to Tyrone, and he showed me what she had got him for Christmas. The perfect gift for somebody with OCD, a label maker. Oh, he loved that. He showed me he had labeled the drawers, the cabinets, the box of pencils, and the box of pens because evidently you can't put them together in the same box. I mean, who knew? He labeled the cat and the kids. When I saw how much fun he had with that, I said, you know what? I'm going to buy my husband a label maker. And he said, no, he can't have one. I guess something about how white men aren't allowed to use labels. I don't know <laughs> what that was all about. But, but being from Pueblo, it's kind of like living in a different country. We have our own way of doing things. I kind of call it, it's a Pueblo thing. Like for instance, if you're 34 and you're beginning to wonder if you're ever going to be a grandma, it's a Pueblo thing. <laughs> if, you're 12 year, if you're a 12 year old girl and you weigh more than your three brothers combined, that's a Pueblo thing. <laughs> if you've ever bought a burrito from a stranger with a cooler, Never wondering how many roaches are in his apartment. That's a Pueblo thing. If you tell people you're going to Walmarts, but you're only going to go to one of them, that's a Pueblo thing. If you look for black Sharpies in the cosmetic department, that's a Pueblo thing. <laughs> yeah. But one good thing about Pueblo, very family-oriented. In fact, we actually celebrate Father's Day every week at the county jail. We call it visitation day. If you make minimum wage, but you spend a fortune on your one-year-old's birthday party on booze, it's a Pueblo thing. Speaking of birthdays, I uh, had one last month, and I'm not really doing good with this getting older thing. I mean, I used to be so amorous, horny. Yeah, yeah, but I've kind of been losing that, you know, so I wanted to get it back. So I thought, you know, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to reread my Fifty Shades of Grey books. But it was a lot harder rereading it because the pages were all stuck together. <laughs> the really bad thing is our youngest daughter moved in with us for a little while, and I found out she was reading Fifty Shades of Grey. 
Well, as a mom, I was pretty concerned about it. So I showed it to my husband. I said, what are we going to do about it? And he said, well, I don't think we should spank her. <laughs> Probably not. So... So anyway, I have been getting a little bit more amorous after reading it. And so I have to admit, I've been flirting a little bit with some of the guys on Facebook. I just got to get them to quit calling me mom. I mean, that used to be okay, because I used to be a MILF. And that was so awesome. And then I became a cougar, and I thought, you know, that's really still pretty cool when you think about it. I was actually kind of kidding myself and thinking I still was a cougar until I looked it up on the Internet. It turns out they only live to be about 30 in captivity. <laughs> and I've been in captivity or married for 40 years, so <laughs> guess I'm not a cougar. <laughs> Since I'm a grandma, I guess that makes me a gilf. Yeah, my uh, wild oats have turned into cream of wheat, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I've, I've had people tell me, Pam, what is the secret to being married for 40 years? And I tell them the truth, we stay married because of the kids, because neither one of us wanted custody of them. <laughs> you haven't met my kids, or you would understand. <laughs> so my oldest granddaughter's 12, and she wants her own phone. And I thought, well, I, I guess that's OK, because when I was her age, I had a phone. I shared it with the other six members of my family, but I still had a phone. And we never lost our phone. It was always plugged into the wall right where it belonged. We never dropped our phone in the toilet. <laughs> the cord wouldn't reach that far. <laughs> I never waited in line for the next new phone. Although I still remember to this day the thrill of exchanging our rotary phone for one of those push button jobs. That was exciting, I'll tell you what. Um, I recently started a new job. That's not easy at my age. I don't remember things as well as I used to remember them. So I was reading on the internet that sniffing rosemary can improve your memory. So I started sniffing rosemary at work. Turns out that's sexual harassment. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew, you know? <laughs> so our job had an employee appreciation day and they asked all of us to bring something baked to work. So I brought my son. Yeah. Then they had one of those working lunches, and they said we should bring something Mexican. So they brought my daughter-in-law. <laughs> <laughs> and I was thinking, you know, I wouldn't mind being Mexican, because I'd save a lot of money on tanning beds. <laughs> I'd finally be able to swim, so that would be a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'd finally be able to speak Spanish. Okay, not with any grammatical accuracy, but I could still speak it, and that would be kind of cool. <laughs> and the best thing about being Mexican is I could join that Pueblo social group, the Serenos. <laughs> I, I hear they have killer parties, so that would be kind of cool. <laughs> I think I would really like that. <laughs> so yeah, My husband says, in Denver, they're not going to know what the Serenos are. And I said, well, I'm just going to go for it. See, it's obviously they did, so that was a really cool thing. So at this stage of my life, my four favorite words are, your prescriptions are ready. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> now in California, they would say, that means here's your pot. But of course, we live in Colorado, right? You don't need a prescription here. You can use pot for recreational use. Which is a really good idea because the thing you really think about after you smoke a joint is, now what I'd really like to do is climb to the top of Pike's Peak or some other recreational thing like that. <laughs> I don't know. But the thing is, is that have you guys noticed that the tourists are flocking to Colorado like crazy? And the tourist industry has come up with a new model. They basically say, come to Colorado for the vacation you'll never remember. And you guys know Coloradans were already pretty mellow. But now that pot's been legalized, we have not had a mass shooting in the last year. So the Coloradans are getting even, see, it works. It's really awesome. And even that is good for the economy. All the fast food places are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. 
And unlike some of those other states, there are a ton of jobs available right here in Colorado because nobody can pass a UA. <laughs> it kind of sucks. But my favorite, my favorite prescription is Ambien. I'm probably doing this on Ambien right now for all I know. <laughs> Ambien can make you do things that you don't realize you're doing and afterwards you'll forget you even did them. Which might explain the email that I got that said my ex was looking for me. And I didn't remember having an ex. And I thought it must have been an Ambien moment. And if, there, if I had an ex, there had to be a time I was married to two guys at the same time. And that would make me a bigot. No, wait, that's not the word. See, being married to two guys at the same time, that would make me ambidextrous. No, but that would actually come in handy if you're married to two guys at the same time. Uh, let's see, married to two guys at the same time would make me stupid, and I may be blonde, but I'm not stupid. My husband used to love the ambient sex we would have. That would be the sex we'd have between the time, between the time I would take the ambient and the time it would knock me out. I would become so uninhibited. I was liable to do just about anything. He loved that. Until one night he couldn't find me. And he looked out the window and he saw I was getting on with the neighbor. And I didn't even know I liked gals in that way. <laughs> I wouldn't have known it, but he videotaped the whole thing. <laughs> so now my husband is taking that little blue wonder pill, Viagra. Ambien's also a little blue pill. So I said, this is going to work out great. You take your little blue pill. I'll take my little blue pill. As long as you don't wake me up, we'll both be happy. But the next morning, my ass was killing me. <laughs> well, I'm Pamela Sterner, and that's my story. Woo, Pam! Um, you should come up to me after the show, Pam, and I'll give you something to sniff that will improve your memory. <laughs> it will not be rosemary. <laughs> Heads up. All right, you have your final comic coming to the stage. This has been a really good show, I would say. Nobody died. Like, three people died at Bonnaroo. No one died here tonight. So... To close us out, here's Tim Messenger. Yeah. Woo. Uh, I'm guessing you guys have seen like signs with like Braille, like etched at the bottom of the sign. Of course you have, because you're not blind. <laughs> How does a blind person know that there's even a sign there? Like, I've never seen a blind person just walking around, feeling the walls for signs, find one, with Braille, read it. No smoking. Where the fuck am I? Probably just help him out, you know? Probably just... Guys, uh, last month my mom turned 65, and uh, this year for her birthday I got her a Netflix streaming subscription. Uh, so I bought myself Netflix, I gave her the password, and <laughs> she loves it. But with Netflix, it offers you recommendations based on what you're watching, and we share the account. So between my mom's overdose of reality TV and my vegan documentary selections, Netflix doesn't know what the fuck to suggest. It's too bad the Learning Channel doesn't have a show about two lesbians living on a farm sanctuary called Peacefully Grazing. I haven't made that pitch yet, you know? But my mom's retired, so she just binge watches TV shows, and then she called me up after she watched every single episode of Cake Boss. I was like, Mom, you just watched 60 hours of Cake Boss? And she got all excited. She's like, that's like an associate's degree. <laughs> when you complete a season in Netflix, there should be an option for you to print out a certificate of completion. My mom never went to college. Make it official, Mom. Cake Boss University. You got it. You got it. I don't know. Uh, I don't know if you guys play video games, but like games like Call of Duty or other like military war games, they shouldn't just end with you completing all the missions. Like that should just be the first part. Like to beat the game, you should have to also successfully integrate back into society after the war. <laughs> Like, get a job and keep your family together, you know? 
Like, if you miss a therapy appointment for your PTSD, you shoot up the office and have to start all over again. You're going to need a doctor's note and an extra life to try again. If, I could, if video game characters had to go to therapy, how many times do you think they would try to jump over a hole in the ground and fall to their death over and over before they realize it's time for them to work on themselves? Like, if the Super Mario Brothers were in treatment, maybe they would realize that they're risking their finite lives for a cake or a kiss on the cheek. Like, Mario would finally just lose it and break down. He'd be like, the princess can wait. What am I even doing? I used to run a successful plumbing business. <laughs> Luigi, we're out of here. Maybe this bitch wouldn't be in trouble if she got some taller security guards and a bunch of mushroom people. <laughs> Guys, I'm wearing, uh, I'm wearing skinny jeans, uh, also known as pants that fit. Uh, I'm a denim conservationist. That one's not very good, right? All right. <laughs> Guys, I get called gay all the time. I'm not gay, I'm a vegan. They mix it up <laughs> all the time. I'm not interested in anybody else's meat. <laughs> I, some people don't. I really like gay people. Like, I love gay bars because sometimes I like to be bought a drink so I can feel pretty. <laughs> I'm not gay, I just like free drinks and compliments. Some people find out that I go to gay bars and they call me a queer. No. I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> Some people don't like gays. More people don't like vegans. And if you're a gay, vegan, black woman, forget about it. <laughs> uh, I don't know, like as a vegan though, like I never cook. Like the only reason I have cookbooks is to kill spiders. Because it's made me frail and weak. Plus, like, I don't know, killing spiders, that probably makes me like a bad vegan, but Colorado's make my day loss is that I can use deadly force on any intruder and those spiders are trespassing. <laughs> Do you know what a 12 gauge shotgun does to a wolf spider? It misses and gets you evicted. <laughs> Unfortunately is what happened. Uh, the, best, the best part about being a vegan is I'm gonna live forever, uh, the worst part, is that when you're a vegan, you eat alone. That's what. My girlfriend was a vegan. She moved in with me. She made me a vegan. Then she dumped me and moved out. It's like she was spreading veganism one failed relationship at a time. But when we lived together, she did all the grocery shopping and the cooking. So when she broke up with me, she left me with a diet that I didn't even understand. Here's a joke you could tell your friends. Uh, how do you get a vegan to eat meat? Tell them that it's vegan. They're gullible. Anything that you say is vegan. They're excited. Uh, I don't know. It's weird. I, uh, I'm 30. I grew up in an, an interesting time where everyone would, would call people gay. Like, every day in high school, I could hear a football player yelling, You're gay! at someone. Which was to be expected because they had a pretty low vocabulary. But, I mean... I don't think the football players are trying to be a bunch of assholes. I think they were just trying to help others find their sexuality. Because it was the football team, they would know they had already experimented. <laughs> football players are gay. I mean, who joins an activity where they know they're gonna get naked twice a day for four years with a bunch of dudes and doesn't try sucking at least one dick? <laughs> Come on. Come on. <laughs> I played group team sports up until they required group showers. All right, time to read books. <laughs> Every time I've showered with another person, my penis has entered them. It's like a rule. My brother hated taking baths when we were kids. It was, uh, <laughs> it's a fun childhood. Uh, high school is weird though, because like, in high school, guys just were so obsessed with sex, like if a pretty girl would walk by, some guys would like turn to their friends and say something really creepy. They'd be like, oh man, she's so hot, I wanna have sex with her. And the things I would do, she doesn't even know. She knows, that's why she keeps walking. <laughs> like I never said that, like I'd see that same girl and I would just turn to my friends and be like, man, she's gorgeous. I'd marry her so bad. The things that I would do for her, cause I love her. 
She doesn't even know how amazing our wedding would be. The flower arrangements? Mmm. Arguably, that's way more creepy. Uh, but now as an adult, now when I see a really attractive woman, my first thought is always like, oh man, she is so hot. She's probably a bitch. <laughs> a little rejection will teach you that one, guys. Uh, you live, you learn. I don't know. I don't know how to talk to women. I'm 30. I still haven't figured it out. Like, I went on a first date with a woman that I met online. And this is something I actually said on our date. I said, uh, so how many people know that you're here with me right now? <laughs> Shit, I'm still creepy. Uh, Fucking, I don't know. I, I've never been good at dating. Like I always like, I always seem like I'm on a different page than them. Like in college, I took a, a girl to a party as a first date, but instead of hanging out with me, she just went off and gave three guys oral sex. What? Most people bring like snacks or beer to a party. I brought the blowjobs. Enjoy everyone. Like. It's somehow like I showed up with the X-rated version of Goldilocks. Like instead of flirting with me, she just got wasted, stumbled into the first bedroom she could find, started going down on the guy. Your cock is too small, she exclaimed. So then she stumbled into a second bedroom, found another guy. Yours is too big, she whined. So then she stumbled into that third bedroom. Ah, oh, this dick is just right. She said happily, and then I kissed her goodnight. <laughs> and that's the story of Goldilocks, the Three Cocks, and the Neapolitan Snowball. For those of you that know what Urban Dictionary is. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. It's, uh, it's weird what these... <sighs> I don't know. I, uh... <sighs> Here's a question. How come they have all these pills to make a man's penis bigger, but they don't have any pills to make a woman's vagina smaller? Like, how come it's always my fault and I have to do something about this? Maybe you just have a big vagina. Every woman I've been with, huge vagina. That's unfortunate. All right. Guys, they couldn't even have a pill for that because it would just fall out, you know? Like, how, how, how do you even get a vagina to eat a pill? Do you got, like, stuff it in some cheese, you know? Like, how do you want... They don't have a pill to make a woman's vagina smaller, but if a woman doesn't take the pill, it'll make it the size of a baby. So, all right, no good, all right, all right. <laughs> uh, I don't know, it's, uh, it's hard enough to find someone that you wanna be with, you know? If you're with someone that you love and they love you back, congratulations, that's wonderful. But if you're still looking for your soulmate, you should probably just work on your personality instead. Because if you think there's only one person out there for you, you're an asshole. Like, you should be an agreeable enough person that more than one out of seven billion people might want to spend their life with you. I'm not looking for the one. I'm looking for anyone, all right? Like, I'm such in a hurry to settle down that when I see a woman, my vision goes red like I'm the Terminator. And I'm just like scanning and analyzing her measurements and potential hobbies. And then I'll detect like a crucifix necklace and it sets off a warning like potential churchgoer, eh, 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 no wife, no wife, no wife. <laughs> On to the next. Some people, they say that you'll end up marrying someone that's like your mom. There's no fucking way I'm gonna marry someone like my mom. Like I love my mom, but every time I go home, it's just like questions and judgment. Like that'd be the worst wife to wake up to. When did you get home last night? You smell like a brewery. You need to go to church. Do you want me to make you breakfast? Have you been eating? Take off your underwear. I'm doing laundry. Do you want to have sex? No, mom. Okay. That's not a good relationship. All right. <laughs> what about this, guys? This is a fun one, and it's pretty rough. Here we go. Dirty. Here we go. Dirty joke. Uh, I tried watching a porn where like a teacher has sex with one of her students after class and she's talking dirty. She's like, I wanna feel your hot cum inside of me. And he's like, oh yeah, yeah. And then he pulls out his dick and comes on her tits. Were you even paying attention at all? 
Not following directions is what caused you to get held after class in the first place. As a former teacher, nothing makes my dick softer than poor listening skills. But, most, most porn is unwatchable. Like, I, or I have a fetish. Like, I have to enter so many search terms now to find a video where the woman isn't wearing high heels covered in baby oil and has a normal amount of hair on her vagina with no black dicks, and where the description doesn't say that the people having sex are part of the same family. I just wanna watch a woman enjoy having sex. I don't wanna see a family ruined. These tissues aren't for tears. The tissues I'm referring to are for my semen. Skeet, 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 skeet. All right, um, that's gonna do it for me, guys. Keep it going for your host. You guys have been a lot of fun. Oh, that was so funny. Thank you, Tim. Uh, and thank you, uh, all of our comics and our audience and uh, the employees and Eugene and God. The most important one. Uh, thank you also to the people who are watching the live stream. Um, and I think that's everyone. I think that's everyone. Uh, great show, guys. Good night. <laughs>